Welcome, Jessica McDonald, to the podcast. We are so happy to have you on. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. Thank you for having me. <laughs> well, you got a little intro song and everything? No, I really don't. That just came on top of the dome. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, welcome to the show. Uh, you are our second women's national team player that we had. We had Emily Sonnet a while back, and she was one of the most uh, listened to uh, podcasts that we had. So you got nothing uh, You got nothing to prove, really, other than being the best one now uh, above her. Are you going to be? Oh, here we go. Let's do this. Just, just well, no pressure. Proper well, champ. World champ, Jessica McDonald. Get it right. There we go. World I like Cup that. Champion Jessica McDonald. All right, let's. Uh, <laughs> as since since I know you've you've listened to plenty of these podcasts before, just not ours. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a little. I'll give you a little uh, summary of what's going to happen. First, I'm going to give you some quick hitters, which will be easy questions. It'll just get you warmed up, okay. um, which I know you need not, none of. But we'll we'll go with that first. Then we'll get into the interview. Ask you some questions about your career. Um, and, and then at the end, Ike Opara has his Ike's interrogation, which he asks you five difficult questions. Oh you dear. can plead, you can plead the fifth to <laughs> one of them. Okay. If you don't plead the fifth to any of them, then you can ask any one of us three, a difficult question that we must answer. Okay. All good. All good. All right. We're going to start with the quick hitters and we're going to change it up a little bit because we're all in quarantine and going a little bit crazy. So it's going to be coronavirus related questions here. Okay. First question is, and this has been going on Twitter for a little bit, is what is a TV show that you have watched before that you wish you could completely forget? You get the little men in black uh, forget laser and you completely forget about it and you can binge watch it all over again without knowing what happens. Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> Isn't that oh, be so better. Better? Isn't that yeah. some race anatomy? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. It's still actively running, right? Yeah. I love that show. It's so That's great. That's a good show? <laughs> no, that can't be a good show. It's like, isn't that like almost like a watched, soap opera? I watched it in college. I watched it in college. I did. See? It's, it's like, good, we're like, right? We're okay, back me up age, here. Right? We're around the same yeah. age, so it was a college thing at the time. Oh, boy. Crazy. I, mean, that. I expected yeah. better, Jeff. I'm not going to lie. I, I, I went with Lost. I don't know if you guys have ever seen Lost, but... Yeah. I watched the last ever episode of Lost, actually. <laughs> that's the only one I've ever seen. And I, that's the only one I haven't seen because I was watching halfway through it, and I was like, this is terrible. <laughs> there, it's like Game of Thrones. Like The last episode is just done. It's stupid. It really is. I didn't watch Game of Thrones either, so I don't care. None of you guys did. Oh, dear. Jess, are you still there? I didn't watch that either. Yeah. Jess is still there. I was, your, your picture yeah. froze. Oh, there you go. You're back. But your picture had frozen for a second, so I wasn't, I wasn't sure if you could hear us. Um, all right, Grey's Anatomy, you're going to stick by that one. Yeah, I'm here. Right. Yeah, uh, I'll stick with it. All right, cool. All right, here's another one that, uh, you know, I saw a little bit on Twitter, and it's, I don't know if I, I wrote this one as well as I, I could have, but one thing that you've learned because of quarantine. So I, I've always said this, so I don't know if I've learned it, but one thing like for me is that life is not short. It's actually really long, and and now we can we can realize how long it really is. So that was that was like mine, but I I didn't really learn that. I just confirmed it. So is there anything that you've learned because of quarantining and social distancing? Yeah, I think just kind of being in the house more because I'm always on the go. It's like a very strange, almost territory for me, even though it's like it's home, but. I'm not one to just sit there and binge watch Netflix. Um, <laughs> you know, one reason is because I'm a mom, I'm a professional athlete, and, you know, my, my days are just long in general. And so with that being said, I think just kind of being at home more, it's very strange. It's very, yeah. very weird. Yeah. That, that, and that just is... learning to adjust just being home. It's weird. It's crazy. It's so weird, yeah. right? So I love being at home. I'm like, I'd be the opposite of what you said, but. <laughs> uh, it's still weird having to stay at home. So yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a mental ground. And, and funny that you said that because my third and final question for quick hitters kind of you alluded to. So my question is, is it harder to be a mom while you're a professional soccer player on the go or while social distancing? On the go. On the go. Yeah, because 
I have a, a pretty easy kid, and it's easy to entertain him. And he's he's a fairly good listener, and I'm I'm grateful for you know the the character that he is and the human being that he's so far turned out into. And being at home, he does make parenting easy. And whereas with my job being with the U.S. team, always in camp, um, you know that's that's hard because there's a lot of times where I physically can't bring him to camp because he's in school full time. So mm-hmm. it's just missing those, day, those days without him. That's when it gets difficult for me, you know, because he's, he's part of my everyday routine. But when I have to distance myself from him for work, that's, that's when it gets hard for me emotionally yeah. how, wise. How old is your son? He's eight. Okay. Yeah. So I, me and Sal both have three kids. He has three daughters and I have two daughters and a son and they're all younger though than, than your boy. And, I can tell you from my perspective, I don't know about you, Sal, but it is harder to parent when everybody's at home the entire day other than like, <laughs> you know, like I, at least yeah. for, at least for me, for a father, I don't know about a mother, but for a father, like you get to kind of pick your moments and like, you know, do fun things and then do parenting. And, and now it's just like the whole damn day you got you. I wrote down a schedule from like 830 <laughs> to 830 what they're going to do the entire day. In order to like get through it, because the first day was just like, oh my god, dude, there yeah. were it was toys on the wall, there was like crayons, <laughs> you know, it was insane. So yeah, my schedule would have to be from like 10 a.m. to like 12:30 at night because that's when they like go to bed. So it's they go to bed pretty at hectic midnight? past midnight, yes, dude. Dude, it's oh, crazy. Dear. How old? Well, none are you? Of... <laughs> Five, three and a half, and uh, one and a half. They're just on a really oh. bad schedule. Uh, no, that sounds like it's yeah. It's perfect. a good schedule, actually. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> no, I, I want to ask you: Is it easier once they start going to school? Absolutely, because yeah. he's at school all day while I'm at training. Whereas beforehand, when he was more so a toddler or a baby, um, you know, I'd come and get him at an earlier time because of daycare and, and things like that. Whereas he's in school all day before I have to be at training, and then he has his after school program that comes and picks him up from school and he's there until pretty much as late as I really need for him to be with my schedule. Um, because as pro athletes, sometimes our schedule changes because of weather Always. or coronavirus, uh, yeah. like who knows. So, um, yeah. you know, we kind of had to roll with the punches with our career. So I, I think that since he's been in school full time, it's definitely helped with my own schedule. Yeah. With, so I think we're we're not doing you we're doing you this justice. I, I don't think people know, maybe not everyone, that you're a single mother and that's different than what Benny and Sal experienced. Oh, and, no doubt. <laughs> I didn't know that. Absolutely. I did not yeah, know that. A single yeah. mother. So that's she's a badass to be able to do this. So how does that work when you travel, you know, in your kid stays in market? Like do you have someone to t- like that looks after him? Like how does that whole thing work because I I like I just don't understand how you're able to do it. Yeah, you know, I I set him a, a daily alarm clock to wake himself up and you know, I, I put snacks in the fridge so he can feed himself. So you know, he's he's independent enough to take care of himself for a few weeks before mm-hmm. I come home. Um, you know, at eight years old. So he's he's pretty mature for his age and being able to take care of himself. And I was just waiting for you guys' reaction because I'm totally joking. Um so I was gonna well, I was gonna well my my <laughs> question like, my question was, like, was, was there a grandma eight, coming? Like wait, hold on. <laughs> I was thinking like an eight year old saying this. You guys are like, hmm, oh, okay. No, I was thinking about my five year old and I was like, when she's eight, is she going to be able to do all this? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So, one cool thing that I do have, I have an incredible support system. And I'm sure you guys know I went to University of North Carolina and I, I built a lot of relationships here. So, North Carolina is sort of second home for me. And um, I pretty much call them my North Carolina family. They're my host family. And one cool thing is that you know they're business owners and they own multiple child care centers and you know they're they're pretty much my parents like I said and so they're all about childhood development childhood education and so it was pretty much their idea to obviously help take care of my child while I'm away at the U.S. national team and so we moved in with them and he stays with them while while I'm on the road and his school's five minutes from their place which was very convenient for me and so if without them to be honest I have no idea what I would be doing because obviously he can't be in camp with me for three weeks at a time and I'm no good at homeschooling I don't know what I'm doing teaching him 
math and reading and things like that, it's, it's, it's difficult if you're not a teacher and you haven't learned those types of things. But with that being said, it's, it's been an amazing journey having them in my life because they're literally family away from family. I don't have any blood relatives here. And just to have their support while I'm on the road, um, you know, nothing but love for them because I have no idea what I would literally be doing without them. Cause I've, I literally have no other help here. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's it's it's a while. It's it's weird to think because you've you've been a pro for quite a while now, so you've had them at different stages in your career and at different mm-hmm. places. I don't know what you know what your situation was at a lot of those places, but I can't imagine it. It was great, you know, when NWSL was starting up and, and how that whole thing was going on. I know now the situation is a lot better. Still needs to you know a long way to go, but um, absolutely, it's yeah, it was tough because like. I got traded six times in the first five years in the WSL. And for me to have to find a whole new support system, have to find a whole new nanny. It's difficult part about journey, sort of being a mom since day one. Um, to find just someone new to obviously like watch my kid for me while I'm at training. So that was that was really hard mentally and, and physically, obviously. For sure, and trusting, trusting. That, yeah, you know, exactly. Your kid, so yeah, that's been that's the hardest part, I think. Yeah, finding someone that you trust. Yeah. Um, I, I was gonna actually let Ike ask the first question, but he's already asked the first question since he knows you the best. Um, and I kind of had one that kind of comes off of that a little bit. It's not as much about parenting, but it is about how much you moved and played in different you know places, and so. You played in Chicago, you played in Melbourne, um, Seattle, Portland, Houston, uh, Western New York, and North Carolina now. And out of all those places, um, you know, well, where, did, where was most home to you? Where did, where did you uh, love it the most, whether it be for soccer, whether it be for the support that you got, whether it be, you know, just the city and the people that you met? Um, you know, what was your best stop, I guess? My best stop is, is North Carolina, hands down. Um, like I said, it's second home to me. I know people here and just being able to play in front of my alma mater was just, just the cherry on top. So for my career to just bring me back here, I am truly grateful and, and just blessed to be back here because this is, this is where I've been most comfortable in my career so far. And for this organization to keep me as long as they have, this is the first team that I've played for longer than one season. And, you know, that's that's a big deal to me, first and foremost. And so for me just to be here for four years since we've been an organization, I am truly grateful and comfortable just being here, especially with the support system I have, especially for my kid. And then obviously having all the resources that I do have here as well. So I think those are just like the two key important things for me in my career and, and in my life at this point. Nice. For sure. So I got to... So I, I knew your brother in, in San Jose, and so I knew of you. I, I knew B Mac uh, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Brand, Brandon I played against. Oh him dear. As well. Hopefully, good we things. All, we, oh all dear. Dear. Brand, we all played Brandon it. came to uh, <laughs> to UCLA on an official visit when I was there, and then. Oh, didn't, cool. Okay. Yeah, he, he ended up obviously going to USF, but he uh, he came yeah. to UCLA for an official I visit. I played so. against him in the regional. Uh, so we won national championships for Southern California. I played against the Sereno Golden Eagles in yeah. Arizona, and his team beat my team and I think they won the whole thing actually if I remember this yeah. was like 2004 maybe or 2003 one or two yeah. see they won the national title they won everything yeah I remember yeah they that. were good they had Robbie Findlay on the team at the time they were they were stacked yeah, they were so good at one point yeah for sure yeah so all right but, yeah Mike, go ahead well yeah what I was saying well I was uh you know I got to meet you at the MLS they, they hosted a great round table with Black History Month and we, we, we talked about a lot of issues and subjects that were, I think, that were enlightening uh, to a lot of folks. Uh, don't know if we have that same kind of, you know, overlap with listeners. But I think uh, one of the things that we touched upon was, you know, and, and wanted to hear from your perspective again of, you know, being a black female in soccer in this country where, you know, realistically, it's a leader sport. You have to pay to play. And, you know, that representation is necessary. And do you feel that, that weight? you know, when you step on the field, especially when you're with the national team? Absolutely. And I, I grew up mostly with my grandmother and she, she's very old school pointing out 
black and white throughout a, a lot of my life. And so it's, it's obviously one of the first things that I noticed. There were soccer tournaments that I was in and I'd be the only black girl in it, you know? So obviously yeah. those are things that, that I've noticed and just trying to obviously carry myself in, in a very professional manner because I just want to show the diversity that we do have in all sports because this has always been a standout thing for me being a soccer player because I grew up playing basketball. I, I grew up running track and I played every sport you could possibly name. And obviously there was a lot of diversity in all the American sports. Whereas here's this new fresh international sport where it's more popular. And just trying to be one of the best um, you know, it was it was very humbling, and it still is to this day. Because seeing how many of us that are on the national team now and being on the field together, being able to carry ourselves at the international level is such a beautiful thing. And it's just amazing to see the game grow with so much diversity now. Because you just you see everything now. We we have girls on the team now, and you know the national team started off with one, and now here we are. And it's just amazing to obviously expand diversity in this sport in, in America. Yeah. Right. And uh, uh, if you... go ahead. I was going to add something with with what Jess talked about, because I wanted to talk about her early life. But if you have something kind of more related, I can I'll, I'll jump back to it afterwards. Yeah, for sure. I think we I mean, it's a great piece of MLS soccer. Everyone should go watch it. I mean, we can get into it. Uh, don't want to take too much of the time. But it's just, you know, we talked about a bit of the struggle of being, you know, black going through a predominantly white sport. And it's really fascinating. And uh, I know that, Jess, you started a futsal court, I believe, in, in uh, you know, in, in minority neighborhoods. Um, I yeah, believe you were I'm saying. wanting to. to I'm, I'm getting my foot in that door. OK, that's yeah, try that's, to... that's that's future future plans right now. Dude, that's huge. I, that's how I grew yeah. up playing soccer. So I was I was born in Brazil, and that's all we have. We don't have grass fields anywhere, you know. So until at least you're older, and so futsal's everything to develop like the technical sil- skills and and that side of it. And so, yeah, I mean the U.S. that would be awesome. You know, it's more of a poor sport in Brazil, and in the U.S. it's a rich sport. So that that mm-hmm. kind of you know makes it more difficult. But I think futsal courts are would be huge in developing you know kids' skills right from the beginning. Absolutely. In different neighborhoods. Yeah. Yeah. So So what I was going to ask you, though, was and you kind of alluded to it a little bit, was you played all kinds of sports growing up. Right. So I I, you you tell me if any of this is incorrect. I know you played basketball and you won state championship in basketball. Mm -hmm. You you were uh, you you were track runner and you were, you know, record holder and champion for 400 meters. (laughs) And like you. Is this all accurate? Am I reading Wikipedia correctly? Yeah. And the yes. and the recent fun fact she tweeted that she was once a quarterback for her uh, for her you grade school football team. Pretty much fun fact. She was a quarterback <laughs> as well. Yes. So yeah. so my question is this: You are obviously really talented at a lot of different sports, and and it almost was soccer what you were most talented in, or is that something that like you just loved more, or you wanted? I know you talked about how you know uh, Brandon, like you kind of wanted to follow in his footsteps a little bit, and you know, maybe prove that you're just as good as him or what was it that drove you to soccer and not anything else? Yeah, it was, it was definitely my big brother, Brandon. He had a huge impact on, on that decision. Um, you know, soccer for him, since he was like five years old, was always just his sport. Um, you know, there, there's some people who, who had the privilege to be able to be a multi-sport athlete and are good at all of it. And there are some who are just good at one sport and that's just their sport. And so for Brandon, it was always just soccer for him. Whereas for me, I was able to take advantage of just kind of dabbling into everything. Track and basketball, first and foremost, were my primary sports. And then I kind of came to an off season. My grandmother was like, look, you can play soccer like your brother Brandon. I'm like, okay, cool. Let's, let's do this. I was 12 years old at the time. Had my chance with youth national teams by the time I was 14. And so it, soccer started to show me around the world a little bit. And you I'm going to all these college and the world and in the entire United States. I just 
I saw more opportunity with soccer, even though my success with other sports were almost merely the same. There weren't like youth national teams for basketball or track, but, you know, being able to receive full scholarships in track and basketball were the same as soccer. But I just noticed that with my success in soccer and sort of where it was taking me, made me fall in love with it more than the other sports. And that's, I was probably like a a senior in high school where I was like, okay, this is really what I want to do. And even though I went to junior college first, I still ended up playing all three sports, but my primary focus was soccer at the time, even though I was playing three. And that was sort of where my tunnel vision was, was with soccer. And, you know, Brand ended up making the MLS around the time. And I was like, yeah, this is definitely it. You know, I'm going to continue his footsteps and sort of focus on this one sport. And I was 20 years old by the time I really made that decision to just solely focus on soccer. And so um, I was very grateful to have options, obviously. But, you know, here here I am. Yeah, that's that's impressive, considering I had to pick soccer when I was four years old in order to get as good as I am. So (laughs) you you get you get play like six sports until you're 20 and you're still as good as you are in soccer. That's right. I'm like, what you playing in college? You were playing multiple sports in college, or what? Yeah, what, what just, I didn't know she's, this. She's playing. She's playing professional soccer. She's she was the professional Deion the Sanders of uh, yeah. She's the Deion <laughs> Sanders of uh, women's soccer. Um. Yeah. Uh. What do you got, Ike? I got a well, couple other ones, but you you're the main shooter here. Well, yeah. You no, know, we can get a little bit into the national team. Um. Uh, you know, obviously, you, your trajectory is a lot different. You you're kind of like on, on on my on my terms of you suffered some injuries and had to overcome a lot of a lot of adversity and from you know from sports to to end up making your way onto the on the national team. I mean, you've been it's weird to think about. You got traded what six times or five times? You said in six years or six times in five years, and you're on yeah. the national team. It's like, wait, does that even happen? And, no, and, <laughs> you know what I mean. And so, I can only imagine you never thought that you would have been, you know, in that position to represent your country at a world stage and be a world champion. Do you look back and go, what happened? Literally. Uh, so it, it's so wild because I was just talking to a friend just this afternoon because like a lot of people have asked me over the past several months now, what's it like winning the World Cup? What's it like winning the World Cup? And I'm like, you know, a lot of times my answer is actually like, I, I don't know. It, it hasn't like quite hit me yet. Up until one point, it was like mid-November. Um, I was on the beach. I was on my very first vacation of my entire life and <laughs> sort of on the sabbatical pretty much. And it, it hit me. It all hit me. And all these emotions just hit me. I'm, I'm thinking back on my past, the injuries, all the trades, all the times I literally wanted to quit playing because of how difficult my life had gotten over time being a mom, scraping pennies in this league and working full-time jobs, it just, it just everything just hit me. And I was just like, wow, this is what it feels like, you know? And it just, it was just happy tears, but almost like a sense of relief as well. I felt so relieved. Like I just finally able to relax my shoulders, just took a deep breath and all these tears just started pouring down my face. And, you know, I'm, I'm grateful. It's, it still feels unreal because of all the opportunities that are coming my way and right. just more and more resources, all the networking I've been able to do. I never even thought about the aftermath of even winning a world cup. It's like, okay, yeah, my dream is to make the USA team. That's, that's everybody's dream probably in NWSL and for it to come true for me. And it, it's, it's been a crazy whirlwind, like I said, but when that dream came true, we won the world cup. I just didn't think how it would be afterwards yeah. and it's been it's been crazy but like in such a good way you know especially for my child you know because he's the first person that I want to set a good example for and obviously yeah I mean you, you I tell I am today and yeah you've earned it that's for, that's for sure you, have, are you sober are you guys sober yet from the celebrations <laughs> <laughs> Hey, then we don't we don't need to discuss that right now. <laughs> yeah, well, we're, 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 we already got we already got Emily Sonnet on the on on the partying on the on the plane on the way home from France. So we've yeah. heard we've heard plenty of that. Well, we we heard some crazy stories about Emily with Emily at, 
at the uh, at the World Cup as well. What was it? Something about like not eating bread or eating bread every day. I baguettes. can't remember what it was. Oh my gosh. Oh, baguettes. Yeah, those baguettes. They're dangerous, <laughs> man. They just kept bringing out loaves. Just twelve loaves every every meal, and it was three meals in a day, you know. And snack time would come, and there was baguettes. And yeah. I like I literally couldn't eat bread after that for months, and I still don't even think I've eaten a piece of bread except when I eat a sandwich. But that's as far as it's gone for me. That's baguette overload. Eat. That's all I eat now. Bread and cream cheese, dude. It's crazy. That's all you, you, that's that's all you ate. ever ate. That's oh, all you ever ate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait, I was going to ask. Um, so, obviously, you had you had a, I, I would imagine, a little bit of a different coming up through the ranks, right? So, you went to junior college. Then you went to UNC. You transferred there. Um, then, like you said, so yourself, you, you got traded. I don't know how many different times. When did you feel like you kind of finally, you know, f- found firm footing, I guess? Where, what stop was it? Where did you feel like you, you had that success and now you could actually, you know, kind of call your own shots as opposed to just get traded all over the place until you, you know, you found yourself a little bit. So where, where was it? Where, what team and how did you do? And, and when did you feel that? So I, I had gotten traded to Western New York Flash um for 2016 season and I was like okay so I signed this one year contract for that year and I was like okay now I'm just going to take it one year at a time just kind of see where this goes because even before that I was still traded every single season season leading to that day and so I was like okay let me let me give this a try because Paul Riley was going to become our head coach and he was my head coach for Portland Thorns and he's probably one of the best coaches still to this day that I've probably ever had. And so with that being said, I was like, yeah, you know what? Let me play for Paul Riley one more time and let's just kind of see where this goes. And we were the Western New York flash in 2016. And when I tell you, we were a bunch of nobodies. We were a bunch of nobodies. People never even heard our names. People didn't know who we were. We we're in Buffalo, New York, you know? And so we ended up winning the NWSL championship. We ended up winning it. And people were just like, who, who is the Western New York Flash? Who are these girls? You know? And so for us to have such a successful season from what our coaching staff went through and what they created us to be. And that was like, we were these underdogs and we took that underdog mentality and we ran with it that season. And that was a great feeling. And that was, that was like one of the best years I have felt. It was like, okay, here are my friends. I finally made some friends and, you know, the camaraderie is amazing on and off the field. Everyone's getting along. And so all that just sort of pieced together, all of our random, random strengths that we had, the talent that we had, everybody just had these random talents and our coach, Paul Riley was just able to put it together and we ended up succeeding that season. And it was just like, well, the world was just kind of like, who are you guys? How did this happen? And then we, we got bought out to North Carolina from Western New York Flash. We kept the core of the team. And so from that transition from New York to North Carolina, I knew it was just going to go on this, this slope going upward. I knew that we were just going to be continue to be a successful team. We're still the same team as we were in Western New York since 2016. And ever since 2016, we won NWSL Championship 2016. We lost in the final 2017. One in 2018, one in 2019. So wow. we made the final all four years in a row, being this underdog, but the core yeah. of our team is still here and we're carrying it over into 2020. And so just this whole chunk from 2016 to 2020 has been an absolutely incredible journey. And I think it's just because of the teammates that I've had. And then obviously like our coaching staff who sort of instilled this competitive, like different level of competitiveness in us. And just sort of the work that they put into us. And then we have to just apply it on the field. And that's it. A little bit of hard work and able to piece together all these different talents. And we're still continuing to do that because our momentum is all like skyrocketing <laughs> right now. And it's been yeah. absolutely incredible. That's crazy. Yeah. Making, yeah. making my hometown look good. I actually am going to bet on you. Wait, wait, can I bet? Can Buffalo? I Buffalo is your home. Come on, man. Don't you disrespect <laughs> me like that. You won't catch me dead in Buffalo. Bill's Mafia? Quite sure. Yeah, well, Bill's Mafia is reckless, but I- I'll watch, but you won't catch me dead there. No, That's no. I'll, I won't place a bet on you guys to win an all wink wink. So, <clears throat> well, their first, their 
first there needs to be a season, right, for anybody to bet yeah, on anything. Right. I know. Oh, that's the only so thing that can slow down. You guys, we're just then. training, and it's so boring. I'm are sorry. you training? I'm training? You're outside. Yeah. So we are in pairs, okay. only with one other person, but we're not. We're not very close to each other. We're just setting up drills, and we're just far apart, passing and running, and that's it. Mm-hmm. So yeah. coach put us in pairs to go and lift. And we're still at a distance from each other, washing our hands before and after. Like we're we're nowhere near any anybody. We're just two people just training at a time, and we're in different time slots, so hey, no I'm, one's around each other. I'm hoping that I'm hoping There's that Landon and Adrian Heath are listening in, so they can get <laughs> yeah. some ideas for you too. Yeah, yeah, well, you'll, you'll, what, you'll you'll see me there. Trust me. At, <laughs> as as we've been on this Skype call, the California governor just issued a total lockdown, so I'm not going anywhere from this house. I'll tell you what, <laughs> that's impressive, dude. Everything's gonna get locked down. Who knows how long we'll be here? We'll be we'll be podcasting for the next six months. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure, the fans will like that though. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know if I have anything else, Ike. Um, well, well, I have one, Ike. What's... Ike, real quick. So go. Real quick, yeah. Jessica. So going off of, you know, you guys said you had that underdog kind of mentality when you were with Western New York and you guys won everything. Um, what motivated you guys like the years after that? Because like obviously you guys aren't underdogs anymore. And I know that was something like like when I was with New York Red Bulls, we struggled with that. Our first year we had like this chip on our shoulder that like no one knew who a lot of us were or, you know, we had a lot of guys that were kind of given second chances. You know, mm-hmm. how did you guys – kind of stay motivated to, to constantly prove it? I think that I truly believe that since we still have the core of our team together, I guess I would have to say that's the advantage that we continue to have over other teams because other teams, other teams look different every single year. You know, everybody has a different back line or there's a whole new, whole new different midfield. You know, on this team, there's there's always different changes within our league. But for us, we've always kept the same. We have like 10 plus play of the same players for the past four years on this team. And I believe that's just the advantage that we have. We know exactly what to expect. We know that we're going to have each other's backs on and off the field no matter what. And like I said, the camaraderie is just on another level as well. Yeah. Everybody gets along with everybody. And I think it's it's that trust, too, that we have within each other. It's like, okay. I lost the ball, but my teammate's going to trust me that I'm going to try and chase that thing down and win it back. You know what I mean? So it's, it's just those difference. little things. It makes a huge difference. You know, you, sure. hey, you're a center back. Imagine <laughs> you're, you're a striker losing the ball and they don't try and win it back. How yeah, but they just usually stand there. If I lose the ball, and I just like, oh, screw it. I'm going to stand here. <laughs> yeah, but you see what I'm saying? Like, that's right. that's what that's what we do for each other. We fight for each other. That's exactly what we do. And it's like, it's it's really it's a really cool thing to obviously be a part of, but a huge chunk of that also comes from our coach, Paul Riley. You know, he, he motivates us and it's like, look, you guys just need to put in the work. You put in the work, we're going to succeed. Or you put in the work. This is, this is how we're going to improve day in and day out. And, you know, he's, he's very into his job as well. You know, the man chooses fingernails all day and he has no fingernails because he's just trying to be very precise with our training sessions, how we play, how can we fix this if it didn't, work correctly on the field and so just little things like that it's it's amazing to obviously being able to continue to learn the game it's it's a crazy thing to me still learning day in and day out and we learn a lot from him and that's also you know kind of where where that comes from why we want to continue to succeed I got, I'm wondering how you're going to get a question in about the national team and tiptoe around the uh no, no. the lawsuit oh, yeah. Well, no, no. The only thing I'm going to say about that is I can't believe Carlos Cordero's. Just you don't have to say anything. I can say this since I unofficially <laughs> retired from the national team last episode. Actually, I unofficially <laughs> retired. But last episode, <laughs> I did. Actually, I did. Uh, the audacity of this man to say that women are less skilled than men. I couldn't believe wh- when that came. Like when I saw that, <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, if not more skill, like what? I, like well, that was the point. Dude, of the is argument. That, I would say that worse than that is that I don't know how many people that in position of power within U.S. soccer overlooked after that. After the fact, <laughs> said they knew nothing about the tactics of the lawyers. That I do not understand. How is that possible? 
So either they're just straight up lying and they did and they did know about it. And now they're trying to save face or they're doing a bad job within their responsibilities because they didn't know how they were going to what tactics they were going to use. Right. It's got to be one or the other. And it just it baffles me that I mean, without getting into like the absurdity of the comments itself. I mean, we can talk about this all day, but like Jess looks like she's like she's she holding can, it. In. She can no, she, she can plead the fifth on this, but it won't count towards Ike's interrogation. <laughs> she, she's just, nodding. I, I think she's kind of nodding, or at least smiling in appreciation of what you're saying. Yeah, no, it, it's obvious, and you know they kind of bit their their own selves, like with like in their foot, in their feet, you know, with this whole lawsuit. You know, I mean. It's it was mind blowing to obviously read those statements and I almost laughed it off. You know, obviously it's a very serious situation, but at the end of the day, it's it's almost a laughing matter. Like, are you guys serious? We'll be stepping back into the early 1900s. Like, no, it's not like that anymore. You know, and so obviously we proved ourselves. It, look at our records. Look at how many World Cups we won. Look how successful we just been. Obviously, as, as females, and so I think we've proven ourselves enough at this point and. For them to say that, it was almost slapping us in the face. Like, dude, we're representing you guys. You're gonna say that about us? And then you went and oh played my that gosh. night, right? Like, oh, yeah, I would have. Sh- y'all shouldn't have showed up. Just say, uh, whatever. Did, well, did oh you guys? Gosh. Did you, you guys put? Did today. you guys put the jerseys up for sale yourselves, or did U.S. Soccer do it with with the reverse that sold like I don't know how many jerseys? No, our um, our our PAA came up with that i, I believe um they it's, it's, they yeah, saw no, it and it went on sale like during the game i was like right. oh my you gosh guys sold it blew up like that a record ass. you guys sold like a record amount of those jerseys and now you, i think you guys are, are donating or i don't know I, I i read something but i forget exactly what it was um but you yeah. guys are doing something positive with the money i i, I believe yeah number one selling jersey that's for sure well, so cool bad. They're gonna help out Benny's um, unemployment, I think. It, it does. I expect check. I expect you can go to better check. things than that. Uh, well, at least in, in part, the men's team is trying to do their part to to not look very good. So that's that's benefiting the women's team as well, even more. I we can we can no okay. <laughs> Spoke here. Here goes spokesperson for for the men's national team retiree Ike Opar. What were you gonna say? <laughs> yeah, no, 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 don't you dare, don't you dare, don't you dare. Uh, but I root, I root for a national team. players, players like you know, the organization, all that side, players wise. I root for the national teams, so let's just be clear with that. But yeah. behind the scenes and all that nonsense, I can't fathom. No, you can't, you can't root anyway. for the suits. No chance, you can't root for the suits. Well, Got yeah, for the- oh. Come on, man. That's hey, that ain't it, right? That ain't, that's never been it. No. <laughs> um, all right, we're we, we tiptoed enough around the, the edges here. Um, do we have anything else in terms of normal interview questions, or are we gonna go into the, the nitty gritty? Nitty gritty. I, I say I think it's time for you to yeah, feel some heat. It's not gonna be yeah. easy, I don't think. All right, strap <laughs> in, strap into your seat there, Jess. Uh you're gonna get into Ike's interrogation room. It can get hot in there. So maybe okay. grab a water. There you go. Grab there something to go. drink. We all know that hopefully that's stronger than water. So um we'll let Ike start up and you are in the hot seat. Good luck. All right, hot seat, ready. All right. All right, here we go. Question number one. Sweating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm a, no, no, I'll just be me. We'll, we'll get it done. We'll get through this okay. together. Okay. In the Jessica McDonald Hall of Fame, you get to choose three of these four to be in your Hall of Fame. The, the, the fourth cannot and explain why. So between Carly Lloyd, Abby Wambach, Megan Rapino and Alex Morgan, which three make your Hall of Fame? <laughs> <laughs> you get to plead the fifth on one question. I don't know if that's gonna get you right off the bat. Okay, uh, it's okay. Okay, what are what are my four options? Carly Lloyd, Abby Wambach, Megan Rapino, and Alex Morgan. Okay, Abby Wambach. Meg Rapino and Carly Lloyd. That's what I would have done too. Yeah. Even yeah. though, even though my opinion doesn't matter, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, she's not your teammate, Alex, anymore. So you're 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 good. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you can't find, you can't under like the other three like half unless you decided to not put Abby in there because maybe you didn't play with her. But I mean, well, we have to they were all FIFA Player of the Year. That was yeah, that was yeah. That's the, that's the one can... up that they have on Alex. That's the one. Alex has this though. Yeah, she's got the, the tea, tea celebration. The tea sip celebration. All right, so. Bear with me on this. So okay. those four names add Hope Solo to this to the group. Okay. So in a best out of seven series, those five against Brandy Chastain, Julie Foudy, Christine Lilly, oh, geez. Mia Hamm, and Brownie Scurry, Brianna Scurry. Who wins a best out of seven? I know it's hard to to, to compare generations, in it, but who, in your honest opinion, would take it? Um, I, I think the the younger younger generation would take it. Uh, of course, the bias. Wait, the, the younger, <laughs> absolutely. Like, the younger, She's like good. the more the most recent team. Yes, most recent team. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Because, I mean, you have Hope Solo in goal. She's absolutely phenomenal. Not to take away from Brianna Scurry. Brianna Scurry was absolutely savage obviously in her time but you know i i truly believe with the talent that we have it's 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 another level right now it, it truly is okay all right Fair two enough. for two dude two for you better two. ramp these up a little bit or else she's gonna I'm be sweating. asking something <laughs> <laughs> i'm still sweating oh my gosh okay well i think you're gonna i think you're gonna i think you are going to play the fifth on this third question this is a fan question please okay. tell me it's the one that Dino told yeah, it is. Oh, it's man, not... she's not going to plead the fifth on this. Yeah, if I think it's that's the one easy thing. one. Go ahead. I want to hear this one, though. Well, we'll see. Rank the talents of these husband of your teammates in their respective sports. Mr. Dom Dwyer, Zach Ertz, or Savando Carrasco, or and Savando Carrasco, from first to worst. Zach Ertz, Servando, and Dom. Dom's the worst? <laughs> <laughs> is Dom the least? Who was Dom the most? Yeah, Dom, Dom must have been. Dom's Servando the was the middle one. We can't, we can't, we can't change our minds now. Servando was. I didn't change my mind. I'm sticking with it. Dom's at the bottom. <laughs> oh, no, poor Dom, dude. We all played with him. He's a great guy. He's great. <laughs> great guy, and and husband, and and father. Retreat, retreat, retreat. Oh, God, I'm sweating coming, no more. Coming, oh, dear. Forward. Well, I wore the wrong color shirt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. Jeez. Was, hey, was there another... Uh, who was it? There was another... Uh, oh, well... Um, uh, Anthony Swanson is the shortstop for the Braves. He's uh, oh, another... I was going to say... Um, oh, God. The guy that plays for the Pelicans. I know uh, Lauren Chaney doesn't play anymore. Yeah. Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday. Oh, Drew. Did you play with oh, Lawrence? Yeah, he's Chaney a beast. No. Yeah, he's a beast. Um, youth, youth national team I did, not on the full team. You could have added Drew Holiday, dude. I, I thought you were going to. I love me some Drew. He's, yeah, good. he's good. Good, yeah, for sure. Uh, right. Okay, question number four. Of these clubs that you have played for, <laughs> who do you never want to play for again? Houston Dash, <laughs> Seattle Rain, Portland Thorns, or the Chicago Red Stars? Chicago Red Stars. <laughs> Two times as well. That, that one, you know? She didn't have the name for a second. Yeah. I'm not enjoying myself there. Yeah. Because... I'll be very vocal about that. <laughs> well, you know, share what you y'all, like. y'all don't need my reason why. See, that's oh. when y'all going to start something. <laughs> I'm not trying to start anything right now. That's just how I feel. Oh, goodness. Was that number four? That was number four. She's going to skate through this. If uh, yeah, if you get this one right, you get to ask one question for any three of us. So I can't wait to see that. Or do I hit it with a? Uh, yeah, um, you know what? I'll take my I'll take my uh, I'll take my chance. I'll ask an easier one. So you guys will probably never lose again because you're like the best in the world ever, like of all time, pretty much. But if <laughs> if a team gives you a hard time, which nation is that and why? You there? Hello? Yes, okay. Repeat that. 
Okay, so I said pretty much that you guys are the you know women's national team is the best literally of all time, pretty much, and you guys will probably never lose again. But if you did uh, catch an L anytime soon, which country would it be to? Like, who matches up the best against you guys? Like, just you know, gives you a tough time. Maybe it's nobody at this point. I actually don't think it's anybody right now, but maybe I yeah. I've missed something when I've watched. Uh, yeah, that's that's a tough one. But the most difficult te- team that we played probably within the last year has probably been Spain. Each game that we played against them, we played them twice within the past year, and we beat them two to one in the World Cup, and then we just beat them one zero. Um, in the She Believes Cup, so they've been they've been a handful for us lately. They've been they've been absolutely phenomenal team to play against. Yeah, yeah. I just remember uh, I think it was the Chilean goalie. She was like the best goalie I've ever seen. If it's if <laughs> yeah. it's the girl I'm thinking of, is that no. the one? I, am I right on that? No, that's not that's not the team. But like she's she's a beast though. I'm she's ridiculous, lie. right? Yeah. <laughs> like we gave it everything we had against that woman. And she was just like go go gadget hand, go Good. go gadget foot. I was like, wow, okay, she's never crazy, mind. I'm yeah. just I'm gonna retire now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You've uh, successfully pleaded, or uh, you've successfully, you know, completed the interrogation. Congrats! You can ask any of us a question while you think on that. I actually have a question as a fan: Who are you predicting as the next big thing U.S. women's soccer that no one's looking out for at the moment? She could be playing in the youth team. She could be in NWSL or NWSL, or she could be on your own roster, and we don't, we just no one really knows about her yet. You have any predictions? Sophie Smith. Sophie Smith. Sophie Smith. Yeah, she just came. She, she just came out of Stanford. She just got drafted in the BSL as a sophomore. In I believe she's a sophomore. Just pure stud. She just won um, Concacaf Championship with the U twenty national team, and just phenomenal athlete overall. She's like a. I don't know if y'all know who Lynn Williams is, but like just as fast, but like very skillful at the same time. Great finisher. She's she's an incredible striker, and I literally cannot wait to see what she's going to do in the future with the national team. Because I truly believe she's going to have that chance. Is she as fast as Denisha Adams? Wow, Denisha Adams, you just you just threw <laughs> she, it. She back. went to UCLA, yeah. right? She went yeah, to UCLA. You, you yeah. threw, I know you that threw name. Back just now. Wow. <laughs> yeah, Denisha was fast. I don't know who's faster to be honest. <laughs> She she gives her a run for her money though, I'll tell you that. Okay. She's she's quick. All right. Watch out, world. Sophie Smith. Sophie Five Smith. years from I'm now, we'll be my eye out. <laughs> we'll see if Jess was right. All right. You can ask a question to any of us that we must answer if you have one. If you if you want to pass, that's fine too. Nah, don't pass. Don't pass it. <laughs> okay. It's it's probably not a very difficult question, but it's very random and it's a question for all of you guys. It Ooh. it should be an easy question for all of you. Okay. Um, um, what's one thing that you cannot live without? I think I cannot live without. <laughs> I can go with the sentimental. Yeah, uh, don't, don't do that. That's too easy. I mean, I easy. legit cannot live without my yeah. wife. Like, I know. My world know. would fall apart. We all but, know. You, you, can't, uh, you can't function. Uh, something I can't live without? I'll say Kit Kats. <laughs> I, I mean, love I, that answer. I could. Oh my God. I, I, have, like, I have for <laughs> periods. But like I'll go with Kit Kats. Like that's that's my uh that's my go to. I'll go with with coffee. I, I have to now have my cup of coffee. Coffee's great, yes. Coffee's good for traveling, but I'm not really I don't need it. Um, I don't need it every day, but every other day I, 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 I gotta get my fa- fix, you know. <laughs> what what did I, I say? Give a better answer that comes to my mind than desserts, because I couldn't live without desserts, but there's gotta be something better that, that gets the But what's your to- dessert? Go ahead. Oh, oh. Shoot. I don't discriminate on desserts. All are welcome. What? You're not like more chocolate, fruity. <laughs> all, all are welcome. Cake, I, brownie, cookie. All, <laughs> all are welcome. All soccer for all, desserts for all. Okay. Like, Dude, no, no is, sports on TV is kind of one right now where it's yeah. Uh, it's, it's okay. I can do without that. Are you gonna pick something? Uh, really? You're gonna like say that you don't need anything? Uh, no, I, I'll stick with desserts. I can't think of anything off the top of my head, and I don't want to waste any more dead air. But <laughs> like I'm not happy. In general. Yeah, all the whole, like I said, all. But That's again, the most unspecific thing I've ever heard. Do you want me to say cookies or ice cream? 
<laughs> it really is. <laughs> or donuts. A specific thing. Yeah. Tiramisu. Like, I can list all of them if you'd like. Is there something that you can't live without, Jess? Or do you not want to answer it? Since you really don't uh, have to probably, probably chapstick. Chapstick. Yeah. Yeah. Once yeah, you start applying I, yeah. that, you can't stop. Yeah. Right. From exactly, Arizona, and that's well, my like, problem. Yeah. yeah. Man, dry air, so that's like the California weather too. You need a lot. <laughs> For me, it's a car. It's it's a like my, me, it's a car. I can't function without a car. I can't do public transportation. I'm terrible at it. Like all of that, I have to have a car. And you nah, see, yeah. You would have liked living in Cucamonga with me and taking the train and the scooter to, to work. I couldn't have done it. I would have lost my mind. <laughs> <laughs> the sub, the, you know, working like the New York sub system, subway, I, I like, I don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense to me. I like. It doesn't. Concept. It's like learning a new language. Yes. I, yeah, but I once just, you learn it, then you know it. No, I just bite the bullet and take the like $50 Uber to go two miles. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> um, all right. Well, Jess, thanks a lot for coming on the show. We appreciate it. Um, we uh we hope uh the games this the sport starts back up soon um hopefully yeah. your season starts back up so you guys don't lose too much of that momentum you guys have had for four years now um but uh we're gonna keep an eye out for sophie smith and uh and you guys in north carolina so good luck the rest of the year and thanks for coming on the show awesome yeah. thanks so much for having me you guys appreciate it thank you jess all right have a good one you too.